as humans, we, we play favorites all the time. Everyone has their favorite food, favorite movie, favorite song. And in MMA, we have our favorite events, favorite fighters. And you know, I've been lucky to be here working for the INC coming up on two years. This is my third calendar year. But you know, of course, I have a favorite fight of all time. And today is the day we get to cover it. So let's take a look at UFC 156, Aldo versus Edgar. This is actually a Patreon request, so shout out to Frankenfoot for coming, joining the Patreon and don't, or requesting this card. Sick. UFC 156 took place on February 2nd, 2013 in Vegas at the Mandalay Bay Event Center. It brought in just under 2.5 million to the live gate with an attendance of a healthy 10,875 while getting 330,000 pay-per-view buys. Joe Rogan, Mike Goldberg, they're here for the action, but enough talk. Let's get to the fights. The prelims open up, and Francisco Rivera, he starts us off with a bang with a second-round TKO over Edwin Figueroa. Bobby Green nearly got a win taken away by Kim Winslow, but still managed to get the job done with a third-round submission over Jacob Volkman. Tyrone Woodley, he pulled the wool over our eyes by making us believe he would be an entertaining fighter with a quick KO over Jay Haran. Finally, perpetual boy material Evan Dunham got a split decision win over another boy material guy in Glayson Tebow. So now on the main card, we see an opening contest between Flyweights, Joseph Benavides, and Ian McCall. Out the gate, we see Joey B coming out aggressive with his strikes, but is nearly taken down early. Great defense and an elbow on the way out of the clinch by Benavides. Benavides is really putting some good pressure with kicking so he can close the distance and then letting his hands go. It even wobbles McCall at one point. Big shot hurts McCall again, who's struggling to keep up the, with the power of Benavides. And this is a really fun round with back and forth striking. Second round, McCall is trying to lure Benavides in. Some success, but for the most part, Benavides is taking the round despite throwing some haymakers that miss. McCall goes for a takedown that is reversed into a clinch, and when they're back on the feet, something must have grazed Benavides as he just hits the floor, it seemingly, with McCall swarming on him. Good ground and pound, Benavides is looking to scramble, and when Benavides recovers to the feet, McCall has his back in the clinch. Big round for McCall, who might have stolen it at the end. It's 1-1, I think, going into this final round, and Benavides is letting it rip early with a big right hand that stuns McCall. More back and forth striking with Benavides having the edge, especially during these brief clinch-ups. McCall gets a big takedown with him having a great position on top, but Benavides just scrambles instantly to get back to the feet. The rest of the round sees a bit of a slowdown for Benavides, who is letting McCall lead, but is still the cleaner striker. This is a very good and close fight, but Joseph Benavides gets the win by decision. Honestly, it's a really good fight. I, I kind of forgot how fun this fight was. Really fun opener, and I'm going to give it a flat 8 out of 10. I'm, I'm, I liked it. It was fun. So next up on the card, we have a guy that you watch when you want to take a nap, John Fitch, against probably the best jiu-jitsu practitioner in MMA history, Damian Maya. Instantly out of the gate, Maya just takes Fitch down. John Fitch stands up, Maya's on his back. He's working for the choke constantly, and Fitch is trying to defend well so far. And oh my god, I'm not even going to beat around the bush here. Maya's on his back this entire round. It, it, it isn't great, but it's dominant, sure. Second round, and Fitch is striking some decent kicks and one good right hand lands, but eventually Maya takes him down. Fitch gets back up early, and Maya is trying to press in with punches where he then ties up. There, he drags Fitch down, gets on the back instantly with one hook, and you know what? That's it. That's the whole round, once again. Final round, and you know what? John Fitch, he comes out with a high kick, but Maya ducks under, ties Fitch up against the cage, trying to get the back again. He manages to turn it over, get on the hips, but Fitch is doing his best to fight off. Fitch is trying to get a guillotine, which actually forces Maya to pull guard and defend while Fitch is looking for a big elbow. Maya uses a really cool underhook half guard to get up and press Fitch against the cage. After a failed takedown, he gets it with the next one. The end of the fight is basically Maya just backpacking him, and he wins a very dominant decision. 2 out of 10 for this fight. Let's move on. This fight sucked. So next up, we have probably the fight that this card is most famous for. Antonio Bigfoot Silva against the world's foremost expert on horse-based meat products. Alistair Overeem. Overeem was the heavyweight champion in Strikeforce, though. He came into the UFC... Big liver kick win over Brock Lesnar. Then he was going to fight for the title against Junior Dos Santos, but he popped hot, which it's alarming that he popped hot. And it took so long for us to catch him. Look at him. 
Bigfoot, though, he had a really bad day if you lost to Cain Velasquez, but he got back to his winning ways. But what really got him this fight was the fact that Overeem was talking a lot of smack. He was telling the world that Bigfoot was this big walking target for him to clobber. So this bad blood matchup at heavyweight opens up with both dudes just squaring up, but Overeem dashes in with a lead uppercut quickly. Overeem clinches up from it, lands a knee up the middle. We see Alistair really just kind of working punches to get into the clinch to land the big knees against the cage. Bigfoot is trying to get strikes going, but Alistair's just kind of gliding away versus a clinch into more knees against the cage. Near to the end of the round, Overeem does hit a really cool slip into a big right uppercut. Bigfoot is looking lost after one round. Second round, Overeem lands a big right hand, clinches up, and tosses Bigfoot to the mat. Overeem is dominating Bigfoot on the ground this round, making it look easy, but Herb Dean stands him up when it starts to slow down a bit, and Bigfoot finally is letting his hands go. And it's definitely giving Bigfoot some confidence going into the final round. They both go at it in the middle for a clinch with this giant mass of muscles colliding. Bigfoot, though, starts letting it rip after he breaks away from the clinch putting it on Overeem with a big head kick even. More big right hands come in and Overeem is knocked out against the cage. More shots come in, finally knocks him down. Bigfoot wins by KO at the start of the third round. This fight has a very slow second round, but that finish is so good. Nine out of 10 because of how sweet this one is. No one likes douchebags, let's be honest. Overeem was a massive one coming into this fight and it makes it that much sweeter. So for the co-main event of the evening, we see former champion Rashad Evans looking to bounce back after his loss to John Jones as he takes on one of the most underrated fighters, Antonio Little Nog Nogueta. You know what? Man, this fight is not good. A lot of jab feints circling around for both guys. Rashad is trying to go high with a kick like twice. Little Nog, he lands a straight left sometimes. Rashad did get a brief takedown, but uh, you know what? Little Nog gets the round though. Second round, the exact same thing, but without the takedown. So I opened my book and I started reading and um, yeah, I finished it. Uh, you know, I heard Blood Meridian's a good book. I've been thinking about giving that a read sometime. Uh, what do you guys think? Oh, hey, look, the, the final round starting. And hey, we have more of the same. Jeez, this fight wasn't good at all. Nogueta wins a decision against Rashad. And yeah, you know what? Just going to go ahead. Two out of ten. Um, but Stephen King's. Uh, everything's eventual. That was actually a pretty damn good read, so I'm gonna give that an 8 out of 10, though. But now, the main event for the featherweight title, Frank Giger, he's dropping down from 155 pounds to 145 to fight the champion who has basically smoked all his competition. This is a dream matchup. The quick, powerful striker with great takedown defense, but a questionable gas tank is taking on a guy with an endless gas tank, relentless wrestling, great boxing, and arguably, at least on paper, he could potentially be just as fast as the champion. Fight opens up. Frank Yeager tossing out a kick. Always genius to kick the kicker. And Frankie knows this. He's circling around well. Huge uppercut nearly lands as Edgar steps in, but he sees it just in time to glide out of there. Aldo is really letting the jab go, and I gotta be honest, these are probably the best jabs I've ever seen in a fight. Edgar comes in with a great punch combination, tries to end it with a kick, but a big right hand counter lands for Aldo. With another one landing right after that, it's starting to red the nose of Edgar. Near the end of the round, we see the first low kick, and oh my god, that sound is pure haunting. And after this first round, man, Aldo seems to just be the better fighter. Second round, Frankie tries to get his signature high stiff arm into an ankle pick, no dice. Then right after, I swear, I thought it was a gunshot. Aldo kicks Frankie's lead leg and lands some punches while Frankie is wobbled from the low kick. Then another one comes and it drops Edgar momentarily. Frankie manages to time a big low kick with a right hand and a level change that puts Aldo on his back. And dare I say, Edgar is building momentum here. Third round, Edgar times a low kick with a takedown, but like the neck of RVD after a pile driver, Aldo just springs back up perfectly. Aldo seems to be slowing down a bit as Edgar's moving well, but just as I say it, a huge snap kick up the middle blasts Frankie hard. Frankie having great success with his own kicks, which is fantastic against Aldo, and he's putting the pressure on, constantly countering with the right hand. Frankie goes for another takedown, but it's just he's thrown off of by Aldo. Both dudes look to just rip kicks at each other, with Frankie landing a body kick while Aldo misses with a spin. Fourth round. Frankie just, just going well, but he moves into a spinning back kick. 
Frankie goes for another takedown, and while Aldo defends, he comes up with some good punches. Edgar's face is a mess, but you know what? It doesn't matter, because he's really coming back into this fight. Edgar goes for another takedown, this time getting a huge slam on Aldo. Aldo springs up, but he's clinched against the cage. Aldo looks to come in, but he narrowly misses the jumping knee. And man, this round ends, and Edgar, I think, has made it 2-2. And this crowd is going bonkers. Super loud as round five starts. Aldo seems to be getting that second win. His hand speed is kind of coming back, and he's much more aggressive. Another takedown stuff. Frankie is still coming, though. But Aldo still has this power in his hands. Aldo baits an uppercut to land a great left hook. Frankie tries to clinch. Aldo tosses him off, but Frankie lands a knee. Great combination from Edgar. Aldo times a big right hand and a big left hook coming right back, and it stuns Frankie momentarily. Final seconds of the fight, and Aldo jumps off the cage for a Superman punch. Then they both just trade momentarily. This is a technical masterpiece with a non-stop pace, and Jose Aldo is named the winner by unanimous decision. This is the best fight I've ever seen, I think. I think this is the best fight I've ever seen. I think I could legitimately talk about this fight forever. So, that makes me want to do the unthinkable. You know? I'm going to call it... You can call it bias if you want. But trust me. Trust me on this one. Alright? This fight is breaking my scorecard. This fight is an 11 out of 10. I'm... The scorecard has shattered. This is the best fight I've ever seen. I... I can only think of one fight that's even close to it, and that's in Pancrase. I don't know if I'll ever get a chance to cover that, but maybe I will one day. But what are my final thoughts on this card? This card's over, you know. What did I think about it? There's two really bad fights, really bad fights. Oh my god, what stinkers, dude. But the other three are awesome, with one of those three being perfect to me. What a dope card. Despite those stinkers, what a dope card. I, I'm, I'm going to be thinking about this card for a while. i got to be honest. Rack this up as an overall 8 out of 10, I guess. But man, I want to go higher because of that opener in the main event. But that's it for me. Once again, this was a Patreon request. And if you want to see me cover your favorite fight of all time and see me freak out and go nuts because it's probably awesome, because you guys are awesome, then go ahead. Join us on our Patreon, where as a reward for joining, you get to have this handsome mug cover basically any fight card I can get my hands on. Also, we are adding more and more Patreon-exclusive content that you don't want to miss, including our newest series, Uncaged, which has me and Carl talking about anything. It doesn't have to be MMA. Just talk about anything. You can even suggest topics for us to talk about. Maybe we'll do a Q&A at some point on there. I'm Joe with the INC, and thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for watching. Peace.